Good day everyone. I am Dr. Ozama Odoa from Physics Department, University of Lagos. I will be describing the experiment to determine the coefficient of static friction using the horizontal beam. Let's look at the schematic. We have M1, which represents the mass of the wooden block. We have M2, which represents various masses loaded on a weighing scale pan then a frictionless pulley. Apparatus includes various masses. I have 2 grams, 5 grams, 10 grams, 100 grams, 20 grams, 100 grams, 50, 200 grams, 200 grams, and various masses. I have uh, my wooden block, frictionless pulley, weighing scale pan, I have a wooden beam that I will use to attach my pulley. Then I have a beam balance. It's very important that the beam balance is on zero mark. The beam balance usually comes with three scales. You have zero to 10 grams, zero to 500 grams, and zero to 100 grams. So in starting this experiment, I will first measure the mass of the wooden block. So I will use my beam balance. So it has balanced on 199.5 to measure the mass of the pan. Before you start, everything must be on zero. So it's uh, 45. I have set up the apparatus to describe the experiment. So I have my scale pan, I have my frictionless pulley with a rope, a string tied directly to my wooden um, block. So before I can start, I have to position the wooden block on a reference point. You can see I've marked, marked my reference point with um, red. And then I'll have to load the mass pan with masses until the wooden block moves. Go. So I have 80 grams. I will put uh, 10 grams to see. Yes. So you can see it has moved. So let's count the number of masses so that I can record uh, the total masses. I have uh, 80 grams and 110, that's uh, 90 grams. So I will go and record 90 grams under my reading for M2. Then the next trial, I will have to repeat this for the second trial. I uh, put it back, making sure that my reference line is just on the reference line mark. Then I will try again. Add 60 grams. So now I'm going to add 10 grams to see. The last one was uh, 90, but let me see what this one is going to do now. I'll put 10 grams, so let me put 20 grams and see. He has moved. So let me count the number of masses. That's 80 grams plus 10. That's 90 grams again. 
for my second trial. Well, I have added 100 grams on top of the mass of the wooden block. Now I have to find the corresponding number of masses that I will add to make it to move. So let's see, here we go. I have uh, 50, 50 grams, that's 100 grams. I'm going to add 20 grams to it, giving me 120 grams. It has moved. So I have 120 grams. I'm going to record under the 100 grams plus the wooden mass of block, the corresponding number of masses I should have M2 as 120 grams. So here is a table for my readings. I have my added mass as my M1, where I have the mass of the wooden block plus the mass that I have added on top of the mass of the wooden block. So for my M1 with zero gram, that means that I just use the mass of the wooden block alone. And then the corresponding value of the loaded masses, I have recorded it under M2. And remember that I had three trials. So I have my M21, M2, the, the second trial, then M2, the third trial. And for each M2, I must have to add the mass of the pan. So my M2 will be mass that I obtained from the loaded masses plus the mass of the pan. So I have my M1, which is zero grams, um, with the wooden mass alone, 50 grams, 100 grams, 150 grams, 200 grams, and then the corresponding values of M2. Now, my M2, I have to get the mean M M2. Remember, since I did three trials, I will have to add my M2, all the masses for M2, and divide by three to get my mean M2. After obtaining my mean M2, I will now put all my obtained values x axis and y axis so my m1 i have all my obtained values for m1 m2 all my obtained values for m2 that's the mean m2 after that i will now plot the value of my m1 against m2 i have plotted my graph and i have my m2 on the y axis and my m1 on the x axis and my plot shows a straight line passing through the origin. The gradient of this uh, slope is the coefficient of static friction that we are looking for. So for my own value, I have gotten mu s, which is the coefficient of static friction as 0 0.44 comply in order to get the correct values. And these are the precautions. It is very important to determine the coefficient of static friction because it has huge impact on contact surfaces and in the inertia of all bodies. Thank you very much for watching.